Welcome to Jay and Moore, Josh and Joe. It is Tuesday, October 25th. And Joe, I know we've described the NFL as a lot of things. I, uh, I feel like we're, they, we've described them as drunk. Mm-hmm. We've described them as problematic. Mm-hmm. We've described them as broken. Okay. So we, yeah, it's been a lot of things. But I really do think that the NFL, um, like we discussed, is a tease. A tease, yeah. yeah. That kind of just brings everything together, too. Right, right. It, it just brings the entire cocktail of of drinks into one. It's like it's like jungle juice. That's essentially what we're what what the NFL's doing right now. It's just a big giant bowl of jungle juice. Mm-hmm. You don't know if you're gonna get drunk. You don't know if you're gonna get blacked out. You don't know if you're gonna get an allergic reaction to it. You have no idea what the NFL is gonna give you. You might get drugged. You might get drugged. Yeah, you you might end up with a a hooker in a random hotel with a bunch of blow blow cane everywhere. Yeah, you have no idea. That's and I think it's just teasing. Like it's just constant weekly teasing. Yeah. So it's it's not nice. It's not nice. The NFL shouldn't be doing this because it's just it it it, it just fucks with your emotions a little bit, you know. Yeah. And but they just know they know exactly that 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 teasing that they're doing is going to squeeze every single penny out of us. Yes. And. And it keeps us coming back. And it keeps us coming back. That's the whole, oh man, the tease. And then it's just like you tease a little bit and then you string them along. Yeah, we'll yes. whine about it. Yeah. We'll whine about it, but I guarantee you next Sunday we'll be right back on our right couches. Back. Yeah, exactly. Actions speak louder than words. We'll bitch and complain, but guess what? You, you, you're you going to find me on the couch. <laughs> yeah, where, where am I going to be where, Sunday? Where, where am I going to be Sunday? What am I going to be watching on Sunday? Football. Exactly. So, all right, well, I think that's, I think we, we've officially narrowed it down, right? We'll probably come up with something next week, but I think for right now, I think we've officially narrowed down the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we got a pretty good slate coming up. We'll uh, we'll finish the intro, we'll get to all the games, and then we'll go do some college games at the end. Um, dude, I think Father Time, Father Time is taking its toll on these old quarterbacks. Yep the 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 the, the Tom Brady, the Aaron Rodgers, Matt Stafford. Ah. I don't know, man. Like we, they were talking mad shit. The TB12 method, you know, Aaron Rodgers doing drugs. I, I think that there's just no defeating Father Time. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, that's true. Like they, they're trying. You can, you can try all the different methods, like like you just stated. But in the end, like you're just not going to be able to escape it. I think Di- Walt Disney figured it out. He's froze himself. Oh, so yeah. What Tom Brady, well, actually, what Aaron Rodgers probably, what they all need to do is just freeze themselves. Yeah. Like, like I mean, we already know that, like, ice baths are good for the, good good for your skin, good mm-hmm. for your, your muscles and everything. So just freeze yourself for, like, 12 years or something. Come back and just resume exactly where you left off. You know a good conspiracy theory? Ooh, what's that? So, basically, Disney came out with the movie Frozen, Mm -hmm. so that anytime you you type in Disney Frozen, it won't come up as Walt Disney being Frozen. Yeah, love it. Oh, man. I I love a good conspiracy theory on a kid movie. Yes, absolutely. Especially, like, I loved all, like, the, the... the sex references, the penis jokes. Uh, well, not even penis jokes. They were actual legit, legit penises drawn into D- Disney movies. I was pretty. I was about to say. I like saw it with my own two eyeballs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. It was pretty blatant. Actually, some of them were pretty blatant. So, yeah. I. I mean, I. You know, America is, is just the 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 older we get, the older America gets, the hornier it gets. Yeah. So no. like, like I'm not talking about us as individuals. I'm talking about America as a, as a country. We're just getting hornier and hornier. And we subliminally, you know, send messages to our kids to get them started young. Yes, yes. Well, uh, that's that. You're you're treading on on <laughs> murky waters there, bud. So um, we're gonna well, let's move on. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's move out of this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was National Tight End Day. Yes, it was. Bit, a little bit underwhelming. We had. Uh, I mean, we hey hey Kittle played well. Mm-hmm. Kittle played well, thank God. Kittle, Kittle got really excited about it. And yeah, yes. he, he he always gets really excited. But like, I mean, you know, you, Travis Kelsey had an, I mean, he had a good game, but it was an average game for Travis. Mark Andrews didn't do anything. I don't know. Did he get hurt? Um, I don't know. That was a we- that was a weird game. It was yeah, divisional game. And Joku got hurt. So like, it was just it was it was a little underwhelming tight end game. I thought I thought I thought people were gonna throw it more to the tight ends. But anyways, um. Uh, let's see. I got two more things real quick at the beginning of the season. If I told you after seven games that Seattle is number one in the NFC West, would you believe me? 
I would not. I would have not. But that's, nobody would have. Yeah, but that's the tease that we got. We, you know, we were told that they were going to be bad, but now they're good. So yep, yep. they and, teased uh, us. I'm just, you know what? I'm, I'm getting ahead of the NFL on this one. I'm going to go ahead and just expect them to be bad the next three games. I, I think the NFL is going to throw that that little tease at us. Okay. And I'm going to get ahead of it. So yeah, fuck so now, now, when we, now that we've got our thoughts established that they're actually good, they're going to switch it up. They're going to switch it up. Yeah, but I'm going to get ahead of it. So, um, Last thing I have before, I don't know what you got. Uh, the, the, the refs definitely wanted Mike Evans' autograph. Can we just like establish that real quick? Oh, yeah. But, but the NFL is going to cover it up because they always protect the refs before. The, they protect the refs before the players, coaches, fans, anything. Yes. No, that's right. You're absolutely right. And, like, the thing is, is you know that they are covering it up because they're not giving you another explanation of what they were doing. Right, exactly. Like, it was just like, oh, the refs were not trying to get the autographs. Well, what the fuck was he doing? What, what, what were they getting? Yeah. What, 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 what was he doing? Because he was definitely trying to get something. Yeah. I mean, they, they're actually just bad at lying, too. Like, the, come the on. NFL. Yeah, you could have came up with like an excuse like, oh, he had to sign some sort of waiver or something like that, or he had to, he was writing down something. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they, they weren't even creative right, about it. Like, right after the game. Actually, yeah. you know what? They, they're playing to that little that, – remember how we, told, we, we talked about, like, just like five minutes ago? It doesn't matter what they say or what they do. Guess where we're going to be on our couches – or where we're going to be next week, on our couches. On our couches, watching football. Watching football. So, like, it, it's, it, they, they, they cater to the, the ADHD of America right now because, let's be honest – we can get we get all worked up about certain things like Ukraine, Ukraine getting attacked, or like you know just anything in particular about the NFL, roughing the passer calls. We have such a short attention span that it, as if people who are caught in the or like on the hot seat for those things, they just just wait a week. Yep. Just wait a week or two, and we'll just move right on. Twenty four hour news cycle. Yes, the twenty four hour news cycle. We'll forget it the next day when something else bigger comes out. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's the next big thing. <laughs> I'm, it's like the the Toy Story meme, the verbal meme. Toy Story meme. I'm done playing with you. Yep. And then he drops Woody into the into the box. Yep. Uh, you got anything else before we get to the games? Let's get to it. All right. Uh, let's start with the unfortunate one, the Saints Cardinals. Um. I guess I like I've kept trying to give every excuse in the book for the Saints, but I guess we're just bad. Yeah, I, I mean I, we obviously we're still playing Andy Dalton, and, and again backup quarterbacks they have an expiration date. Yeah, four no. to six games, and he, he. I mean I'm done with I'm done with Andy Dalton. Yeah, no, I mean shoot, when you give 14 points to the other team, yeah, no. The the only good thing about this game was that it was actually on Thursday, so it didn't ruin my weekend. Yes, you know, yes, this yes, time yes, around, I got, but I, like by the time Thursday's over and then Sunday gets here, well, actually for us Saturday gets here, I'm over it. Yeah, I'm over it. I can go on to LSU, and then after LSU, I can go on to Sunday and enjoy my Sunday without having to watch the Saints. So technically, we had a good weekend. We did have a good week. I'd say we had a perfect weekend. LSU won. We had a perfect weekend. Yes. Yep. So, but uh, yeah. So that was basically all I've got from that. But I mean, we're like literally like Oprah when it comes to turnovers. Like you Bro. get a turnover, you get a turnover, it's, you get an interception. You, you, can, you can have a touchdown with that interception too. Yeah. You yeah. Want that too? Cool. Um. Dude, we got to stop getting fancy with the onside kicks. Just line everyone up on one side and just go. Yeah. Like, it, it, once you keep trying to do this turnaround shit with the, the kicker, it throws them off. I don't care how many times they, they, they practiced it. Um, especially especially since now that <coughs> the, the onside kick rules, obviously, you know, they can't run before the ball is kicked. Right. Um. That makes it harder because there has to be a new style of kicking, which is way harder now to in order for the the ball to be able to pop, stay in the air or stay, you know, a, active. Or, you have to you have to focus more on that that kick where it pops up high, high, high in the air. Yeah. Because you you need to buy more time for your players because they don't have the running stop. Exactly. But, so I, I agree with you as far as the fancy, trying to do the fancy, like switch over to the other side. And you can't do that anymore. Right, right. Um. Here's the thing. The Saints kept fighting. They did not back down. Like, no. Here, like uh, I... I know it's it was thirty four forty two, but they were they were down they were down bad and like they kept going. So I, I I compliment them for that. That's good. Um, I would normally 
in most most NFL years, I would be hitting the panic button right now for, or I'd be close to the panic. I'd have the I'd have the panic button real close to me, you know, and I, I'd have my 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 um my hand ready almost, but I'm not pan. I wouldn't press it, but that would be normal um years. This year, I don't even have the panic button in sight. Because the NFC South is so bad. Yeah, no, I mean, I would disagree with you. I'd definitely be in panic zone right now. But yes, you make an excellent point as far as the NFC South just being atrocious. It's a it's a dump star. Uh, it's a dump dump fire. Dumpster fire. Yep. Dumpster fire. Um, we actually had a entertaining game on Thursday. I want to throw that. I want to put that out there. Yes, it was actually it was actually fairly entertaining. Now, granted, they the the last couple of Thursday games set the bar so low that. Honestly, a Pee Wee football uh, game probably would have been better. Yeah, I mean, we each team could have scored half the points that they scored, and it still would have been better than anything that we got. Yeah, so that's a, that's a the spin zone. Um, last two things: Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins, picked up right where he left off. He's very good. They're a different offense with him Agreed. on the field. Now, Agreed. granted, granted, uh, there's 14 points that they did not receive that was from received from the defense. Well, th- yeah, th- you're welcome. Yes. So, but at the same time, they definitely looked a lot better. But I, I don't know. There's some tension between Kyler Murray and uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Oh yeah, for sure. Did you see the, those memes? Were hilarious because it just made him sound like a munchkin and he just because okay he looked really small in those black jerseys yes he does he looks so small like that's that's the smallest i've ever seen him look well that's why girls wear black all the time because right that's it, you know trying to hi- make their figure smaller it, so it hides it hides the fat parts yeah the muffin it, tops and it definitely does the same thing for kyler murray yes he, it, it hides, hides his, any height that it, he has whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> it hides all of his height um or lack of um here's the thing the one of the first, I think the first, the first pick six was not Andy Dalton's fault. Um, that was a tip. You remember that one? Yeah, that was a tip. The second one was. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't understand the Saints because at, at sometimes they look they look like the most broken team in the NFL, and then at other times they're like a, a well oiled machine. Like, yeah, like they're not I, bad. I, yeah, I can only give so many excuses for the defense, but like I'm I'm confused. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, I like. Obviously, they're not very good. Like, we're we're not we're not good. We lost we lost to the Panthers. Well, the Panthers beat. The, I don't see. It's so confusing. I don't we know. Do, we don't NFL. know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, I'm gonna stop hurting. I mean, my how are we? On, we're we're on week seven, and we still don't know. We have no idea. Yeah. Which honestly, if you if you like objectively look at it, that's kind of cool. That's kind of good. It's yeah. entertaining, but for me, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it one bit because I fucking hate the NFC South and I need my Saints to fucking do good so that I can stop being pissed off every time I see them on my TV. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm done with hurting my brain on this one. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Um, the Saints lose to the Cardinals 34-42. Uh, let's get to the falcons Bengals. This one was one I could actually enjoy um, mm-hmm. because it was on Sunday and it was a local game mm-hmm. and they're going to play – Obviously, they're going to play Joe Burrow, and they're going to play the Falcons around Louisiana. And it was just – it was pure bliss. It was pure bliss because I watched Joe Burrow just absolutely manhandle the Falcons. Yeah. No, yeah, that that Joe Burrow, he's he's hot right now, <laughs> dude. I think I think the Bengals have figured it out. Like like it, it took them a little bit. Like they have some. They had that little, not even a hangover. They like just got the. It, I wouldn't say it was a Super Bowl hangover. It was just um, a hangover from like a surprising year. Like nobody thought they would go to the Super Bowl last year. So like, yeah. it was just like, okay, now we got to get back to reality. They finally got back to reality. I think they're clicking. They look good. The Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, back the the back shoulder throw. Mm-hmm. They make that look like the easiest fucking thing, and it is by far the one of the hardest throw and catches to to perfect. Yes, it's it's unreal. Yeah, no, but they, I mean, not only Jamar Chase, but like the whole receiving court is, it's like lights out right now. Oh, no, Higgins, Tyler, Tyler Boyd, and Jamar Chase had over 100 yards in the first half, both. They were first and second in fantasy uh, wide receivers this week yeah, performances. It, oh, it was un- unreal. And you know what that reminded me of? What was that? Justin Jefferson and, and, and <laughs> oh, Jamar Chase. Oh my gosh, you're making me sad. I know. But Miss those days. Yeah, me too. We we always have 2019. We always have 2019. Yeah. So, um, so Mar- Marcus Mariota only threw the ball 13 times. 
13 times. That's it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, they, 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 I mean, he's been running fine. That's like a Justin Fields stat. That's it. That is a Justin Fields stat. That, that's what I, like, it threw me off. I was like, wait, what? But then, like, they, they just, it's a community backfield, like, quarterback included. Yep. No, it, it definitely is. I mean, they, I don't know. I don't know what Arthur Smith has got it rolling around in his brain. He's just, he comes out with some unique stuff Here's week to thing. week. I like. I hate the Falcons, but I agree with you. He comes up with some unique stuff. He's making. He's make, He's like Brian Dable. He's making something out of basically nothing. Yeah. Like obviously, it's the Bengals. They're not going to beat the Bengals, but he's he's. He's won some games he shouldn't have won. No, yeah, he definitely with, has. with a quarterback that probably shouldn't be starting in the NFL. Yeah, well, everybody wrote him off, but he didn't write back. <laughs> Good old Gino, man. That's <laughs> one. That's an all-time line, man. Yeah. Um, and you know what's you know what's fuck you know what's kind of fucked up. Mm. Atlanta's still tied for the first in that garbage ass division. Our division. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. It, okay, so so Joe Burrow's stat line was like nerd porn. Did you see it, it was like four hundred and eighty one yards? It like twenty or like the the completion percentage was over above eighty percent, and you know th- what he had four touchdowns or something. Yeah, it was insane. It was nerd. It was it was basically nerd porn. It was fantasy football porn. Yep, that's exactly what it was. Um, but yeah, other than that, I didn't really have too too much else on it. It was just a it was a whomping. It, they they whooped them. It was a whooping. Yeah, uh, I would have to say to close out the game, they did a genius play, which was I don't know if you saw it, but <clears throat> everybody's doing now the uh, the Travis Kelsey with the tight end under center play. They you know how they motion the tight end over and then he goes under center. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had a fourth and one, and basically we're trying to close out the game, and basically had Hayden Hurst come in, come in motion. Um, they were in shotgun, and he right as he gets under the center, oh, he, he he actually fakes hikes it. So he actually just says the uh, the signal, but he fakes the hike. And since it since it looks like a trick play, and they're trying, you know, you would think that they would actually try to do a trick play and and run it. Dude jumped off the uh, offsides. Yeah. yeah, jumped off the defense, and brilliant play, Br- brilliant play calling. Awesome, well that, done, that, Zach that, Taylor. That, yeah, yeah, Zach, actually, Zach Taylor like. He gets overlooked a little bit because Joe Burrow is so fucking good. Mm-hmm. But I mean, kudos to Zach Taylor. Kudos to Zach Taylor. Yep. Um. Hey. Uh. I got a real quick announcement here. Um. This coming in, we beat Dallas. The New Orleans Pelicans beat the Dallas Mavericks, uh, one thirteen to one eleven, and we did that without Zion Williamson, Herbert Jones. And Brandon Ingram. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Dude, uh, all right, so yeah, quick announcement: we are in the golden the golden days of, of sports. Yeah, like if you're a sports fan and you can't get your dick up for this, then you got a problem because like there is play the World Series for baseballs on mm-hmm. hockey is be, is all is in full swing. Yep, you got ho- it, football is right in the middle of all the action, and then NBA is getting started. Yep. Like this is if you're a sports fan, your dick is hard. Mm-hmm. Your dick is hard till the end of the World Series. Yep. So, um. Anyways, you got anything else on this one? Ah, uh, that's about it. All right. Falcons lose to the Bengals, seventeen to thirty-five. We got the Lions and the Cowboys. Joe, this game was six to three at halftime. Yep. Detroit Lions. Yep. What happened? Uh, Dak is back. Dak is back. Dak is back. That is true. Dak, Dak is back. And I, for some reason, like the 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 opposite of what has been happening all season for Detroit happened today. The opposite. So the offense didn't show up. The defense actually kind of made plays. Yeah. Well, the, this they showed this offense is a definitely like a different offense when you don't have uh, um Amra, Amran Saint um, Amon Ross Saint Brown. Yeah, Amon Ross yeah. Saint Brown. I know they had they had some injuries like DeAndre Swift didn't play and um. Fuck, they had uh, one other. Jamal Williams didn't play well, um, but but I will give them that they they won the first half. Mm-hmm. They get a half a win. They won, yeah. They, yep. should, they should get a half a win. Yep. Um, dude, pa- T- Tony Pollard runs harder than in than most linebackers in the game. Like it, it's like Derrick Henry is up there, and then Tony Pollard is like a close second or third. Oh yeah, Tony Pollard. That I mean, shoot. I've seen I've seen fantasy we've seen fantasy players or teams actually start him and yes. like 
as their starting running back. Oh yeah, he he's he's just a monster. Yeah, he, I, I love it, dude. He put, he puts his feet down or his head down and then just churns the churns his feet and keeps going. Believe it or not, used to be a slot receiver in uh in college. That's a, a turn th- turn ooh, running back. That's a good fun fact. Yep. That's a good fun fact. Hmm. Because we were talking about that as far as Cordell Patterson um, being being switched around. Yeah. He's the same way. Huh. Do you think what, what do you think happens more often? A receiver to a receiver to running back or running back to receiver? I would have to predict a running back to receiver. Running back to receiver, yeah. yeah. So like if you get a receiver to a running back, that's a little more rare. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I because like I mean the thing is is a running back is is way more physical than a wide receiver. For sure. For yeah. sure. So, I mean, you, yeah, you do have to have hands, but how many how many uh, dual running backs do we have to see in the league? Uh, honestly, and they're getting they're, they're more and more coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, it's actually better for the running backs to have, be a dual threat. Like mm-hmm. the the Derrick Henrys of the world, like the the people who are like who let's say it, what um, Jerome Bettises of the world. They're they're no longer a thing. Yeah, unless you're a freak athlete like Adrian Peterson, but. Like, those only come around once every 10, 12 years. But you make a good point. Derrick Henry, you know, he doesn't catch, like, a whole lot of passes. Nick Chubb doesn't catch a whole lot of no, patches. Nick Chubb's another but they're, good example. But they're good. Um, but, yes, I mean, they're— You have your, your Alvin Kamara's of the league. Ter- yeah, teams are definitely shifting towards more of your Aaron Jones, your Alvin Kamara. Um, I mean, there's just— there's Kirsten McCaffrey. Kirsten like, McCaffrey, yeah. yeah. So Saquon um, Barkley. I uh, love Saquon. Um, <clears throat> so we had a terrible rough in the passer call on uh, Michael Parsons. You saw that? Oh yeah, it's terrible. And then it, it, like it was wild because I was watching the Monday night game and Justin Fields got sandwiched, mm-hmm. sandwiched, dude. Like this motherfucker. Like he, if if Tom Brady would have gotten hit like that, all of his bones would have crumbled. Yeah, and there would have been like fifty flags on the field. It's, yeah. They I, they would have thrown the entire team out. They would th- they would have thrown the entire Cowboys team out. Ro- Roger Goodell probably would have thrown a flag from the stands. Yeah, he would have taken it. Yeah, <laughs> from his little box suite, he would have just chucked a green flag. Mm-hmm. Or no, let's see, uh, I don't know. Red flag. Red flag. Well, then that's a challenge flag. I was looking. At, he'll throw a pink flag. Yeah, that I could see Roger Goodell throwing, throwing a pink, pink flag. flag. Yeah. Um. Dude, at this point, I'd say just let 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 Campbell suit up and play. <laughs> like, I, I, at this point, I think he just he might he he might just will his team to victory. He can't do it from the sideline. Like he can only cry so many tears. Like you only have a finite amount of water in the body. Yeah, he also cry. is just like pacing up and down the sideline, like itching to get in. He's like, "Put me in, coach." Put and me then, in, like the assistant head coach is like, "Dude, you're the you head are coach." <laughs> Yeah, and like I love the fire. I love the fire, and like I really do think he's uh, it's gonna it's gonna happen for him. I, he doesn't have very much talent, especially on the defensive end. Um, so like it, I, I think give him a little while. Give him a little while. Do they have a first round draft pick next year? Because I I saw like the Saints don't have a the Saints the Eagles have the Saints first round draft pick next year. Yeah, because they traded up for right. Chris Olave. Right. So like I don't know what's gonna happen. Um. And I don't know. I don't know what's gonna like. I don't. I don't. There's like three teams that are not doing very well that don't have first round picks. I can't remember. I thought. I, I thought maybe the Detroit Lions were were one of them, but I can't remember exactly. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't recall the Lions making a big trade for somebody. Um, last thing I have is the, that golf interception, like, kind of set the tone for the game almost. The, oh yeah, yeah. Um, when was it? I can't remember. Exactly. I just remember. I remember like watching all the highlights and this. It, there was a there was an interception that kind of set the tone for I think the second half. Or no, no, no. It was a, it was it might have been it might have been closer to the first half. I can't remember, but there was a, there was a bad interception that kind of set the tone. But yeah, I, I oh, think well. last part of our last thing I have for this game, um, the Dallas Cowboys uh, returner Turpin mm-hmm. has probably has to be one of the more exciting returners I've seen since yes. Derek Hester. Devin Hester. Devin Hester. Yeah, Devin Hester was awesome. Yeah, yeah. he he's electric. Yep. He is so Every time he touches fast. the ball, like he just Um Duvernay is good too for the Ravens. Yes. Duvernay yep. is is uh, they the Ravens have one of the best uh punt and kick return teams in the in the nation. Mm-hmm. It, it's awesome. Uh, and honestly, 
a good kickoff returner or a punt returner, especially a punt returner, is electric. Oh it's yeah, so much fun to fucking watch those guys. Just but it, and the 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 vision, the because you, you have to have vision, you have to have quickness, you have to have agility, you have to have speed, you have to have everything. Like you, you have to be strong. You got a call there, bud. I know. Yeah. Anyways, you have to be strong. You have to be. You have to have every every everything about uh like every attribute. Yeah, you know, the, the, every Madden rating has to be ninety nine. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, so, and, and that's the thing. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be all up there. <laughs> every rating's got to be ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And then, but you just got to be able to like make a quick decision because it's like you can't dance around. You can't dance around. You got, but you have to be able to make one move, like one or two moves, in order to get that hole, and that's mm-hmm. it. Um, and that has to be quickly done. You can't just think about it. Right. Exactly. And it's. Split decision. Yep. Awareness, 99. No, awareness, 99. All right, anything else? Uh, that's about it. All right, Lions lose to the Cowboys 6-24. to Let's go Colts versus Titans. Honestly, we can probably kind of go through this one pretty quick because this is it, this is exactly what I would have thought what it came from the Colts versus Titans. Ten, Colts 10, Titans 19. Uh, yeah. Um, like, but it, I mean, the only thing I really got is – is Tannehill ain't the guy. If they want if they want a Super Bowl, Tannehill's not the guy. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough though when your only receiver is like Robert Woods. I understand that, but like he had AJ Brown last year. Yeah, he had AJ Brown and um I think Robert Woods, but well, and he also and Robert, has, AJ Brown's he, he, pretty good. Well, and he also has uh, what's that Trey? What's the rookie Trey? Uh, well, Trey Lynn Burks has Trey been Lynn out. Burks. That's why he I say. That's yeah, why yeah, I yeah. say he's only had Sam. Although Austin Hooper actually kind of came back around. He started reviving himself mm-hmm. a little bit. Had some nice catches. Um, yeah, no, this was supposed to be. I feel like this was supposed to be the battle of the running backs. Yep, yep. Which Derrick Henry, at least he got fed a little bit. I Dude, mean, uh, I was about to say his his workload is is insane at this point in his career. He had thirty carries. Yeah, and he and he just he's like, yeah, sure, I'll take him. Yeah, no I mean, big deal. He knows that's his his style of play. That's just it. Yeah. Feed him the rock. And Taylor is like, I like. It's just I guess I'm comparing Jonathan Taylor to last year. It's just like I said, I was like, is he just non-existent? That and then he only got ten carries though. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's got a he's well, he's one of those backs you got to feed him he, the ball as well. It, did he dress up as a ghost for Halloween? Can they not find him? <laughs> that's like, that's pretty good. Like yeah, you know, I I just I don't know. Um, I will say one nice thing about Ryan Tannehill. He's got a Big Ben Roethlisberger esque fake pump fake. Okay, it's an it's a it's a Ben Roethlisberger esque pump fake. Okay? Yeah, I know you've been missing that. So that's oh you found man, it in, you I, found I it mean, in Tannehill. Yep, yep. I, I, I you oh I, you hit the nail on the head. I loved Big Ben's pump fakes, man. I it was honestly one of my favorite parts about watching the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Just the Big Ben pump fake. It's it's unreal. I don't understand how he did it. Yeah. Um. It was like it, him holding a football is like Shaq holding a basketball. Oh right, right. You know, it's it's just like they, they it all looks like they're baseballs in their hands. Yeah, they can just move it around wherever they they feel like it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think the Titans are gonna win win this division. Uh, I don't I don't really have much else to say about this. I think they won four straight, haven't they? I think so. Yeah. I think they're four and two. Yeah. They and started a, they started really slow though. Yeah, and it's not a great division, especially now that Matt Ryan's out. But actually, that might be a better thing for Colts. That might. I don't know. We'll I mean, see. They start Sam, to, Sam Ellinger, this is your time to shine, bud. They might actually give Taylor the carries he needs yeah, instead of throwing the ball that, 44 times. Yeah, what? What? Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. I, again, I'm going to hurt my brain doing this. But um, yeah. anyways, you got anything else? That's it. All right. Uh, Colts lose to the Titans 10-19. to Let's get to the Packers versus the Commanders. This was... <laughs> This was a um this was this was a uh a what game. <laughs> this was a laugh out loud game. This is yes. Or laugh my ass off game. Yes. Um uh let's let's you know what let's start with the commanders because they won. Heineke, low key, high key, electric. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Like Heineke, yeah, he might be off the rails a little bit, but hey, he's gonna sling the ball. He's gonna sling the ball. And here's the thing the 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 commanders the commanders have great wide receivers now. Yeah, they got uh, like Curtis. Curtis uh, was it Curtis Samuel? Mm-hmm. Terry McLaurin. Yep, they're fucking fire. Oh yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I, Scary Terry's been kind of a little bit out of the scene. I don't know if he 
I, it's either a mixture of maybe he didn't get along with Carson Wentz very well or that Carson Wentz just isn't confident in throwing those uh, one-on-one balls. I'm going to go with— Heineken definitely threw it up to him. Yes. I'm going to go with the first one. He just Him and Carson Wentz didn't get along. Yeah, now I can see Carson Wentz definitely having that personality where it's like, you know, hey, you either like me or, you know, we're not going to get along. I Yeah, I, and also I think he might have just like looked at Carson Wentz as just like, I, uh, you got a face I want to punch. He, might, Car- he Car- might not like gingers. Carson Wentz has that, f- yeah, that's true. <laughs> Carson Wentz has that face that you just, it's that face you just want to punch. There's no real explanation as to why you want to punch it. But, you know, there's those people in your lives where it's just like you look at them and you're just like, I like to use my fist to rearrange your face a little bit. Yeah, like every time you open up your mouth, it's just like I wish I could shove my fist and, like, you know, close yeah. it back again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's just – I guess I'm, I'm – this, uh, this is speculation. I don't know. Um, let's put it uh, – I, I, Rogers only likes Aaron Jones. That's kind of what I gather. He, he, li- he, a li- he likes – um, Lazard a little bit, but he only likes Aaron Jones. Hate stops. Hate stops. Yes. Hate stops. Did you, dude? Some of the Aaron Jones catches he had in this game was just absolutely nuts. Oh, that touchdown catch. The touchdown catch was oh. fucking like no. You shouldn't be able to do that if you're a running back. That's what we were ta- just talking about. That's yeah. You're a hybrid now. You're not a running back. You're a hybrid. You're bro. a hybrid. Yeah, they, we should. Yeah, that's a that's you're just flexing. Mm-hmm. You're just flexing, bro. Um. I think Rodgers. Uh, I think Rodgers might have taken the wrong drugs. He might have taken the wrong drugs this yeah, year, or yeah, gone yeah. too far. No, no, no. He, he ayahuasca is not. Um, is that how you say it? ayahuasca? Yeah, ayahuasca is not. Is not the football drug. You know what is the football drug? And I got it from weed. my my good no, my good friend Josh Gordon. It's um, a line of cocaine, a hit of weed, and a shot of alcohol. Oh, just so crossfade yourself. Yes. Well, that's what that, that was. Josh Gordon's you know pregame. Pre-game ritual there. Yeah. No, that's that's a hell of a pre, <laughs> pre-game yeah. ritual. Yeah. That and um, you can go, what was it? Uh, I think it was Ray Lewis or it was somebody did the uh, did the Adderall route. And I think one person did Viagra. Just had a hard on the entire time. Well, I mean, he might have. I don't know. He might have. I mean, he loved football that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we get boners from football, too, so I, I understand. Either that or if he played defense, he just wanted to fuck somebody up, like, quite literally. Oh, God. Ugh. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. Going, going real sexual. Well, no, but, like, what the what the, what the Viagra does, it, it just fucking just makes your blood go over, go all insane, apparently. I, I don't know. It, 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 it's a banned substance in the NFL. If you can't use it to, to play uh, – Football, hmm. same with Adderall. But anyways, I I mean honestly, I I would, I would take Adderall before a football game too. So, um, keep you laser focused. Yes, laser focused. Uh, dude, here's the thing. With Aaron Rodgers, at the, at, it's gotten to the point where like Aaron Rodgers with his receivers is like is like a girl or a guy or a guy girl or a guy when they keep complaining about. Oh, I'm so lonely. Nobody likes me. I don't like. I don't know what's going on. Like, I can't find the person. I can't find love. I can't find. I can't do this. Like, you have to get to a certain point in in your in your dating life if you're that guy or girl, and just look in the mirror and say, you know what? Maybe the reason I can't find somebody I like is because I'm the fucking problem. Maybe Aaron Rodgers needs to look in the fucking mirror and say, hey, maybe the reason I can't find a fucking receiver or I can't get receivers to do what the fuck I want them to do is because I'm a fucking dickhead. That's what I, that's just what I'm thinking. I don't know. What came, do in hot, came in hot with that one. Yeah, because Aaron Rodgers is being a fucking dick. <laughs> not not being grateful for what he has, you yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Like maybe if you just like say, "Hey, thank you for playing with me," you know, like, you, "Hey, you you may have missed one, but we'll get him next time." You know, maybe introduce some positivity in the locker room, Aaron. Maybe I don't know. He's carrying over that pettiness from the off season. Yeah, like fuck, dude. I thought the ayahuasca is supposed to open your brain hole. Yeah, it closed it up and just made you a little bitch. Jeez. Yeah. Jesus. 
Well, okay, he's on every single one of my fucking fantasy teams. So, and he's just been being a fucking dud. Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Now the truth comes out. That sounded way too personal in tone for that to just not be anything, right. anything, or no relation to it. Yeah, I know, I know. Whatever, dude. Um, but yeah. So, but, but let me, if you think about it, it's it's the right analogy. Like, I'm not. What I said wasn't wasn't wrong no you're definitely you're definitely on point on that right. one so like yeah i mean just like you know maybe maybe be a, like a better person and maybe you, you you know you might get some stuff out of your receivers fuck face <laughs> um actually okay this was a pretty good game that no one saw coming yeah but, no nobody did. well you know what heineken's actually heineken's actually do for a uh, a game like that <laughs> Heineke? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm calling him Heineken. Okay, all right. We'll call him Heineken. I Heineken, like man. I like dude, it. He, dude, he uh, brings out the party and everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just the way he plays. But no, uh, yeah, no. But he, he's due for that because he, he comes out every time, you know, whenever he's – He's rested and fresh. He, you know, he, he's he, typical yeah. backup. Like he can't play for too too long. Oh yeah, no, he's got a he's got a like a short lease. Especially like I think I feel like closer when you get closer to the end of the um end of the season, that backup that 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 backup span gets shorter and shorter. So like you when you start the season, you got about I'd say five or six games. When you start in the middle of the season, you got maybe three games. Mm-hmm. You got maybe three or four games, and then closer to the three quarters to the end of the season, you got two games back max. Yeah, because that the defenses have figured your team out. Yeah, so like you got one or two games where you can surprise the defense a little bit, mm-hmm. but once they get one one or two tapes on you, you're done. They're already adjusted. Co- uh, correct. Yeah. So yeah, no, but he. Yeah, he's definitely he'll he'll definitely sling it. So and he he did that on this game. Um, yeah. Like I said, it, it made the receivers look better. Yep, yep. Dude, the 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 chaos the chaos play at the end. You saw that? Yeah, that was funny. He should they should have just threw a hail mary. I don't know why they didn't throw a hail mary. Aaron Rodgers is the is the best hail mary thrower. You know what? You know what? He doesn't trust his receivers. He he can't get along with his fucking receivers, so he didn't throw the hail mary. Is is that why? Whenever he was lateraling it, he lateraled it to an O lineman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what like, I what did you think that guy was going to well, do? Yeah, where, 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 how far did you think he could have? He probably would have fallen forward farther than he ran. Like, that was like, what, what are you doing, dude? And then, like, I mean, basically, Aaron Rodgers was on the other side of the field. I mean, he, I mean, it, it had to be like a 10, 15 yard pass. Like, you thought he was going to catch that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on now. <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. I, uh, oof. um, so they, did you hear the doink? You, you saw the doink. I saw the doink. That was the loudest fucking doink. That that was one of the loudest doinks. It was one of the loud, loudest yeah. ones, definitely for sure. But I think I think there was another one in that stadium that had a. I think it might be just those field goal posts. And those Dude, field goal posts are you just can hear hollow. Them, you can hear them from the nosebleeds. Yeah, Dan Snyder might be hiding stuff in you know evidence in those field goal posts. Uh, They're dude, hollow. That's, that's where he keeps his cocaine. That's where he keeps everything. That's yeah. All all of his files, <laughs> any, everything, any his, evidence, all of his emails. He yeah. keeps them in the field goal pl- post. I yeah. like it. Oh, that's a good one. Because I, I mean, they yeah, those things sound hollow and they make they're a lot of shit. So uh-huh. like, there's something. There's some reason it's got to be that way. Exactly. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. I had a nice little fun fact about the nosebleeds, but your uh, your little uh, conspiracy theory over trumped it. So. <laughs> okay. Well, well, what was the nosebleed? Well, the, the, the re- it was just the reason why they call them the nosebleeds. Oh, is because Dan Snyder's doing too much cocaine over there, <laughs> up there. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, Dan Snyder. That's what he. Dan Snyder just puts a line of blow at every um, at every bleacher up there. Okay. And you know, you just if you're a Washington fan, and that's how you get through the games these days. You just have to snort a line of coke and then as drink as much beer as humanly possible without dying. Complimentary cocaine. Complimentary <laughs> cocaine. Damn, Dan Snyder's onto something. He's a pioneer. He's a pioneer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. That's where the nosebleeds come from. That's where the Dan Snyder started the nosebleeds. <laughs> Good gracious. All right. You got anything else on this game? No. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, let's, let's move on. The Packers The Packers lose to the Commanders 21-23 to in a shocking upset. Uh, let's get to the Bucks panthers This was the ultimate what-the-fuck game. Because, like, the Panthers, panthers 
Like they're supposed on paper, they're supposed to be booty hole. They got rid of their best player. Their starting quarterback wasn't playing, and their number one wide receiver got shipped off last the week before. Yeah, no. Um, this was supposed to be the official uh, start of tank season. Yeah, of tank yeah. Season, like but you tank, you tank for Bryce Young or what? Who or CJ Stroud? Yeah, or CJ CJ Stroud. Yeah, either one of those two. But yeah, basically that's. That's what that was supposed to be, but their their tank season isn't starting off so good. No, it, it, they're 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 not good at tanking. No, they're, they're not. They're, at least they didn't start start off well for tanking. Um, the that I think that Mike Evans drop at the beginning kind of sealed the deal. Like that was in his hands. Man. Just set the tone for the entire game. Yeah, it, it really did set the tone. I uh, I don't know. Because you could probably you could probably sense from the Bucks that like people have been complaining like the team's probably been complaining about the commitment of Tom Brady this year you know going to the weddings like taking off every Wednesday and stuff like that whether he's really focused or not mm-hmm. and then Tom Brady's probably was like I just dropped that into your hands and then you dropped it yeah, yeah. and it's like it's like I'm I'm doing my job mm-hmm. yeah um, here's the thing I I think I figured out Carolina because. You know how, like, when Miami was tanking for Tua? You figured out Carolina? Carolina Panthers, yeah. You mean the Carolina Panthers that, like, just you don't really, well, nobody knows? Well, no, 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 no. I'm talking about this week. Okay. So, <clears throat> you remember how when the Dolphins were tanking for Tua? Yeah. That was a, that was kind of a beginning of the season type thing. They were, they they were, that was premeditated. That was, they were determined to do that. Okay. So, so, like... With Carolina, I think they're more of a team that has nothing to, that is playing like they have nothing to lose. They lost their coach, best player or best running back, quarterback, wide receiver. They're play. They're not quite in tank. They're not in tanking mode. They're in. They're because at the beginning of the season, they had like how they had high hopes for like McCaffrey being back, Baker Mayfield as their quarterback. You know, Robbie Anderson was like warming up to the fact that um <clears throat> the uh, that. Baker was going to be his quarterback. Mm-hmm. So, like, they actually had hopes. And now that the, everything, the rub basically got ripped out from under them, they're playing like a pissed off team with nothing to lose with an assistant coach that is literally playing for a job. Oh, yeah. Well, so, I, honestly, if you think about it, everybody's playing for a job. Yeah, exactly. So, the, with, when you got a team like that, those are, those are dangerous fucking teams. Yeah. Because they are going to lay everything out on that field. Everything's, every game's like a big tryout for them. Yes. Because it's like, yes, I'm going to finally be able to leave this awful team, but I want a good team to pick me up so then I can... You and know, I want to get paid a lot of money. And I want to get paid some money. So, right. yeah. So, dude, and honestly, Walker, PJ Walker kind of had some dimes. He had some dimes. I mean, he's in he's in that he's in that stage, that early stage of backups. So right. he should oh, be yeah. able to prime. Oh yeah, we got to we got to pump the brakes a little bit because you know, it's it's at this point like we said like I said earlier, at midseason you're about like three or four, you got about three or four games. So I say PJ Walker has about three or four games. On the third or fourth game, they'll figure him out. So he's he's ripe. He hasn't expired yet. Correct. But he's ripe. Um, and so yeah, that's mm-hmm. why that's why he did he didn't do bad. Yeah, I I, I like our, our backup quarterback analysis. The, yeah, the, we we I think we figured it out. Oh, we definitely figured we it definitely out. Definitely figured it out. All right. Um, so I don't know if you saw the new Antonio Brown tweets. Uh, yes. Okay. So tampon Brady, Tom Booty. Yep. Yep. And then he posted the the video of Giselle hugging him. Mm-hmm. Posted that, and now he's also selling T-shirts. Oh um, yeah, he's selling. He, he's he's definitely selling to the, the, the T-shirts. Yep, and um, I, I don't know what he's doing. Like, what is he trying? What, what's his end goal here? Do you think he knows? Do you think he has an end goal? No, no. The, Antonio Brown does not strike me as somebody who has an end goal for anything. He's like the Joker. Do I look like a guy with a plan? Exactly. Yeah, no, he does not look like a guy with a plan. No. Well, the Joker actually had a plan, but I no, mean, he actually does not. Because, I mean, if he planned out, like, he would go to a hotel uh, pool and, you know, whop his dick out and shit, you know, and flash everybody, I, I mean, that's that's some is he stuff on, that shouldn't have been planned. Is he on drugs? Do you think he's on drugs? I, I think he's. I think this is actually, like, him sober. Sober? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Antonio Brown's just fucking crazy like that. I mean, maybe he's off the drugs. What do you mean he's off the drugs? He's off the medications. Oh, oh, he's off the meds. He's off the meds. He's off the meds. Yeah. 
So he's actually like, oh, so he, so he's, this is his normal self, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so you're, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I was right in a sense. I was thinking crack, but you were thinking like actual drugs that help you. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. We just two different drugs. That's, that's a, that's a simple mistake. They're, I mean, dr- they're drugs. They're drugs. Mean. They're drugs. Anyways, Dante Foreman had a good game. Yep. He, he did. Um, that was. I mean, I guess he's, he, yeah, he's positioning himself for, you know, well, starting role. He's also, him and uh, Chuba Hubbard are a nice combo, which is which is being becoming more and more common in, in the league. Well, you got, yeah, it's a th- thunder and lightning, you know. Thunder you got, and lightning. You got like, Deontay Foreman that's going to go straight up the middle, one cut back, and then you got the Chuba, Chuba Hubbard that is, you know, a little bit shifty, kind of, you know, he uh, kind of, is the one that you put in after they've been the defense been wear and tear and he just goes. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree. The thunder and lightning. Yeah, we 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 talked about it a couple of weeks ago with the Green Bay, right? Yeah. Yep. It was uh, Aaron Jones and and Dylan. Yeah. Or not Dylan. I'm sorry. AJ Dylan. AJ Dylan. Yeah. Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's it's not bad. I I I think the Bucks should have used the Bucks should have ran. Why didn't they run the ball more? I don't know why. Or like. Tom Brady was complaining about his pass, his um, offensive line not being able to pass block, and then he passes it over forty times. Like run the ball, you got playoff fucking Lenny there. Like he's a great running back and he's done well this season. Run the ball. Yeah, and if, and whenever he wears out a little bit, they got Rashad White. That's not actually not been doing pretty bad. Yeah, who's actually a, a decently talented running back. So I don't know why they didn't run the ball. I think Lenny only had like eight. Eight carries or something like that. Yeah. Weird. I don't know. Anyways, it was nice to see the Bucks go down, though. That was fun. Yeah. No, that, it, that it nice. really shows that, like, when there's a divisional game, throw out the record book. Throw out the record book, for sure. Um, you got anything else on this one? That's it. All right, dude. Uh, Bucks lose the Panthers 3-21. to Ugh, what? <laughs> um, let's get to – next game is Giants versus the Jaguars. Giants fans – I'm gonna keep saying this until y'all lose. Don't apologize for being six and one. I mean, y'all are fucking six and one. Yep, y'all are six and one. Um, I think Daniel Jones has gone into complete fuck it mode. Complete fuck it. Complete mode. quote unquote fuck it mode. How so? Because that motherfucker just runs. He just <laughs> runs, motherfucker. Like he and he don't give a fuck. I was about to say he. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't run he, scared. No, he does not give two fucks about what is in front of him. He just runs. Has he been hurt? Yet. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, Maybe oh, he hasn't been hurt. Yeah. Yet. So he doesn't. He he's got that that ignorance, which is is. I mean, like you don't know that you're not supposed to be that good type thing. Yeah. Like you're, or yeah, you don't have the fear of injury. Yeah, because you actually haven't been injured. You actually haven't been injured. Because he looks so much like a Tom Brady, Eli Manning, you know, somebody who's really fragile in the pocket. Yeah. That you know, defensive. <clears throat> Defensive players are the whole back from like hitting him because they're like, yep. yeah, I don't want to get a flag on this or yes. break all of his exactly. bones in his bodies. I also think him and the rest of the Giants team are playing really hard for Brian Dayball. I mean, they they love him. They love him, and I think there's a fear factor in there too. But but I do think they I do think they I mean I I'd be scared of Brian Dayball too. But they I do I really do think they're playing because you know how most college coaches can get their teams to play for them. Yep, and. <clears throat> Like we discussed, you know, college college coaches, they're teachers. NFL coaches, they're bosses. I think Brian Dable has been able to become a hybrid of both. Like, he, he's been able to get the players to play for him like college coaches get college players to play for them. But he's also been able to become, be a boss to them like a good NFL coach. <clears throat> he's got that fine line, man. He's just... He's just taking that line and just snorting it like Dan Snyder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I really do think they're just playing playing hard for Brian Dable. No, they definitely are. Um, I mean, they're they doing good. Yeah, I, let's put it this way. It took a lot of effort to keep Christian Kirk out of that uh, out of the end zone on that Did last play. Did you see play. that? That was insane. That was unreal, dude. That shit got me fucking fired up. Right. Oh, man. Like, they, they all swarmed to him. And he was on the one-yard line. Yeah. Like, he was one yard away from the end zone. And, I mean, the thing is, is, like, we've seen so many prolific offenses that, you know, now at, at this point that, you know, I can see being a – like, if I was a Giants fan, I could be like, oh, man, you know, shoot, they're, they're driving the ball. Like, I know how this story ends. And, like, right, you, know, you see right. the ball passed and you see it caught. And then next thing you know it, like, your defense actually makes a stop and ends it and then the time runs out. That, that would get me so oh. fired up. That's what gets – that's that, – that's – 
That'll get my dick hard more quicker than Viagra would. So you wouldn't even need to take Viagra for would, a, no, a, a honestly, game. Honestly, I would just I just need to watch that game and and I I'd, you'd be up. I'd be good to go. Yeah. Okay. I just, honestly, yeah. As long as football's gonna be around, I won't need Viagra. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I, I'll be I'll be seventy eight years old watching football, still banging my wife. That's yeah. yeah. I mean that. Um. <clears throat> Etn Etn looks good. It, it, the, he had a fumble before the end of the second half. That was that that wasn't good. But he he Etn like he's he's still young, but he's looking. He's got like moments where he looks like an elite back. He does. I mean, I I I always knocked him on his size a little bit, but he is he's explosive. Mm-hmm. He is he is very explosive. Why is um. What's up with Peterson be, being obsessed with going for two? I don't think I, I didn't know that was his his thing. Yeah, you know, two is better than one. It is better than one. Um, does he not have a Does he have a bad kicker or something in Jacksonville? I, well, you remember last year they had kicker problems, so I don't know if they've totally recovered from that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So I don't know who the kicker is. I can't. Mm. You know, I'm not fluent in kickers. Yeah, me neither. I'm not uh, Pat McAfee. Yeah, well, that, that yeah, he's a he's a big punters guy, but yeah, Pat but he Mac, likes it. He likes yeah, any he kick li- anything that uses your foot. Yeah, yeah, he I don't he misses calling. He he, he would probably love soccer. Ooh. Has you ever seen soccer? Yeah, yeah, actually, we'll introduce him to soccer. <laughs> we'll introduce him. Yeah, <laughs> like we'll show him some Barcelona games, or or dude, let's take him to like a Liverpool game, or a uh, a Wrexham. Wrexham, yeah. Wrexham. Oh yeah, with the uh, the the Rob McElhenney and uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yep. Team. Yeah. Let's uh, we'll take him to a Wrexham game. All right. Pat McAfee, we'll take you one. We'll take you to one. Um, did you see the uh, bad pass, bad rough in the passer? Um, yep. Call. It was Lawrence on Lawrence. Lawrence on Lawrence. <laughs> Those are always good. Like we had Josh Allen on Josh Allen. Yep. That, yep. Was, that was fun. Um, but yeah. Lawrence on Lawrence. It was it was a bad call though. It was a very bad call. Um, That's a self inflicted wound right yeah, there. Yeah, huh? but he but the but the defender Lawrence was held too. Yeah, they which, didn't which call made that. it which made it even worse. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like you missed this call, but you want to get because you wanted to get this call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Ooh, I don't remember what that one was. I had I had a diff- I had a note. Um, there was a couple of bad ones. Or bad pass, rough in the passer calls, especially one on Jacksonville after the interception. Do you know what? The, do you know what I was talking about there? Um, no. Okay. Well, I don't know what I was talking about there either. Do you have anything else on this one? Mm, no, that's about it. I feel like you had something else, but you're just not saying it. Well, I, I was gonna say Barkley's. We Barkley's back. Barkley's back. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Barkley's all the way back. I, I like saying Barkley's back. Back. Me too. Me too. Yeah, it's fun. And he's and he's one of my favorite players to watch. It. He might be. He might be one of. He might be my favorite player to watch in the NFL right now. Yeah. yeah. It's like him. Or, him or like Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is is a fucking animal. It's like every time he touches the ball, he's gonna get over eight yards. Well, I mean, he's getting fed now. Yeah. He, he's he always should. been a hungry man, but now he's actually getting fed, mm-hmm. and he's showing why. All right. Well, let's move on. Giants beat the Jags twenty three to seventeen. Um, Browns Ravens. Good game. Good game. Um, Justin Tucker. He's made sixty two straight field goals. Yep. Fucking insane. Yeah. I mean, fucking that man. insane. I mean, he just shrugs his shoulder whenever shoulders now whenever he drills a five, 55 yarder yeah. like down like, the middle. You know, no big deal. It wasn't. Like, a, it wasn't a record, but you know, it's just like eh, meh, well, meh, 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 meh. Yeah. Um. Jacoby Brissett has run out of backup time. Yep, expiration He's, is up. Yeah, expiration's up. Um, I think it was kind of up last week, but it's officially up this week. Just put in another backup. I mean, you got like the next backup you put in, you got at least two games. Mm-hmm. I don't know who they have as a backup to Brissett, but he's done. I can't think of it right now, but um, yeah, he's his time's up. Time's yep. up. Time's up. Um. It was fun, Jacoby. Honestly, you just go to another team and, and you'll 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 reset your uh, your your time your games. So yeah, no, I, it, you know somebody will find the we'll see the stats for the first couple of games, you know, and we'll be too lazy to watch the rest of the you know the games exactly and be like, oh, he's a good backup. Yeah, he's a good backup. Exactly. We'll we'll forget all about this year. Yeah, and then his you know it'll all reset. His expiration will reset again. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, the Gus bus was rolling. 
Gus Bus was rolling. Yep, Gus Bus, Gus Bus, Bus is the back. The wheels on the Gus Bus go round and round, and they were going round and round. Yeah, they, he didn't. Uh, he didn't like Drake taking all of his reps. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it was a little deceiving because like Kenyon Drake had a really good game. Was it last week? Mm-hmm. Yeah, last week he had a really good game, and I was like, mm, maybe Kenyon might be the guy. I don't know if you're an, if you're a running back and you you played at Alabama like. I'm automatically gonna think you're the guy. Yeah, like, yep. it's just a knee jerk reaction. It, it's what I. It's what my brain has been conditioned to think. Yeah, well, you know, Alabama dominant. You know, it was- Trent Richardson, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, like Mark Ingram. I the list goes on. Yeah, Sean Alexander, Brian Robinson, Brian Robinson, just unreal, unreal amount of running backs, and they just keep churning out. Um, wait, um, T.J. Yeldon. Yep, and they just keep churning out running backs. Every single year, so like it. I'm my, again. My brain has been conditioned to just think that if you're an, uh, a running back from Alabama, then you're fucking amazing. Yeah, you're the starting running back. Yeah, that that's the way it used to be with Arkansas back in the 2000s. Yeah, they did have some good running backs they as had well. Some banging running backs and Oklahoma running backs in the 2000s too. Anyways, um, the the announcer said something that confused me. He was. I can't. I don't. I don't remember. It was in reference to Lamar Jackson, and he said it was. He was as slippery as a raindrop. Slippery as a raindrop. As a raindrop, I can think of like a a lot more things that were slip that are more slippery than a raindrop. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of his analogy in reference, but I mean, you got some things that are no, slippery. Well, it, it, it was. It was a um. It was it was a run by Lamar Jackson. He just slipped through some defenders, and it was just it was weird because I didn't think I I wouldn't have thought a raindrop. Was that that play where he actually turned into a running back? Yeah, yeah. That was the um, yeah, which that was another another tight end under the center yep. play that yep. derived from the Andy Reid's Travis Kelsey play. Unreal. <clears throat> and um, but this one was creative as well. So you got to give props to John Harbaugh on this one. But basically. Mark Andrews went under center, did the uh, did a pitch to Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I feel like John Harbaugh was just trolling, you know, everybody with that one. Like everybody yeah. who calls his quarterback a running back, he's like, okay, <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch, <laughs> don't believe me, just watch. He still will play good in that position. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> the so the 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 Ravens end zone has like this wall. Like, it's an old-school, like, Wall of Jericho-type wall. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. I, I kind of like that one. Um, dude, Miles Garrett is always in the backfield. Well, he lives there. He, <laughs> that's his permanent residence. <laughs> that's his residence. That's his zip code. <laughs> yeah, his address. His backfield. <laughs> backfield. <laughs> 7044 Backfield. <laughs> um, dude, that, that Njoku uh, injury is, was tough. Yeah, he, I mean he's only out two to four weeks, but he he just started playing really well. Mm-hmm. Like he he kind of hit his stride, and then it, he got taken. Out. You hate to see that for a player, especially like Njoku, who was you know who came into the league as a raw talent, you know yeah. that was still developing at the position. So like you know it's, it's tough for those players because sometimes they're not just given they're not given enough time to actually develop. Exactly. But yeah. like you said, he was in a stride and. That's that's tough. Yeah, you hate to see it. I hope he I would be content because he's he he's he's a big guy. He's a big guy and he's fun to watch. Yeah. Um let's see what the last thing I guess I had a, on this one is just Nick Chubb just drags people. That's kinda like my main takeaway from this game is Nick Chubb just drags people. Yep. Uh-huh. Does, he doesn't like get tackled. He just drags people until he decides he just want he's tired and wants to go night night. He's like he's like Forrest Gump, you know. He just like brings people along, and then like then whenever he's you know done, he's like I'm I'm done running I'm, now. I'm tired now. Nah. Uh, I'm tired. I yeah. want to go home. Yeah, he's just Forrest Gump. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> cool. you got anything else on this game? Uh, that field goal attempt, it was blocked. Yeah, yeah. it looked ugly when it came out. I was like, it man, that was a t- ugly. Yeah, I was like, that's a terrible looking kick. But then I was like, ah, nope, that was blocked. Yep, yep. Um, it was tough. That was tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else? Uh, that's about it. Cool. The Browns lose to the Ravens, twenty to twenty-three. I'm glad. I'm glad we were able to compare Nick Chubb to to Forrest Gump. That was. Right, that's a stretch. Um, <laughs> let's get to the Jets Broncos. 
we can go through this one quick. Because um, the Jet, I mean the Jet, the the Jets should not complain about being five and two. First of all, Broncos nope. didn't have Russ. Um, they had Brett Rippin, Ripin. Yep, Rippin. Um, the main thing I took out of this is Brees Hall. Yeah, that's tough. That's so fucking. That that sucks so bad. I was I got I like last like f- three three or four weeks. I was like the I tuned into the Jets to see if one a Zach Wilson banged a mom or mm-hmm. b Brees Hall was just trucking people. Yeah, or he and he's so fast too. That was such a bad. It said sucked. That yeah. sucked. Yeah, that was tough. Um, oh, we had the Barrios is deceivingly fast. Yes, he's he's sneaky fast. He's got that sneaky speed. He's got that sneaky speed. <laughs> yeah, he's. Why, Joe, why does he have that sneaky speed? What, 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 would, what would make you say that? I mean, he's white. Is it because he's white? He's white. He's white. <laughs> ah, got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, we had another um, another uh, announcer, a, f- a funny announcer. What would, you, what would you call it? Quote? Like, mm. like the as slippery as a raindrop? Yep. Um, I don't know what it was in reference to, but he said, this is the first team all lettuce. All lettuce. First team, all lettuce. Must be a vegan. I, uh, but I love it though. I, I, I kind of like saying that. Like first team, all lettuce. I, I want to. I would rather it be first team, all cheddar. All cheddar. Yeah, first team, okay. all cheddar. They got that cheese. That cheese though. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he said first team, all lettuce. Hmm. Interesting. I like. I, I feel like we need to talk about that a little more. Yeah. These announcers, they're funny these days. So it's a, it, maybe it's the all team, all vegan team of the NFL. Yeah, all people yeah. who are vegans. Yeah. Quarterback would be uh, Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Jalen Hurts has an all female staff on his, uh, in his, in his uh, group. No shit. Yeah. I feel, and I just feel like half the females are vegan. So I don't know. He might, I, he might have some vegans on his staff. It's very progressive of him. Yes, it is. It is good for him. Good for good for you, Jalen. Yeah, good for you. Deshaun could never do that. De- no. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Anyway, speaking of Deshaun, like, so I think he would play better if he got castrated. Ooh. Okay. Like you know how the Unsullied in yeah. Game of Thrones they played better. Yeah. Or, or I'm sorry, they fought better because they had they. It was just like they had nothing on their brain but kill, kill, kill. Yeah, they they, they weren't they it, weren't it horny. Yeah, it, they weren't. They, well, they couldn't. All the brain that was going to go to their penis went to their brain. They actually went to their brain. Yeah. Yeah. So they it was just they they were the ultimate force. I think like if you could castrate like some football players, they would just it they would make the ultimate team. The Sean Watson would actually focus on his massage and actually get his muscles recovered. And he could play better on Sundays. Yes, versus like jizzing on random. Girls' faces. That that we solved this problem. Damn, wow! Just just chop his dick off. And then Cut. he's got five Super Bowls. Got, <laughs> <laughs> at least five Super Bowls, bro. Because like I think he'll just dip in the fountain of youth. Yeah, the doctor was gonna come up to him. He's like, "All right, hey, look, I got the secret for you to get five Super Bowls, but." You gotta chop your dick off. Yeah, you, you gotta cut your dick off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the public would like him if he, if, if think about it. If Deshaun Watson chopped his dick off, think about the public. It made be it like a, okay. maybe a bit of public uh, th- announcement. Yes, we forgive you, and we he has to show his, him chopping his dick off. Uh, it, like like you remember how they used to do public hangings back in like the eighteen hundreds? Yeah, that's a little gruesome though. The, a public castration? Yeah. I mean, you oh, okay? It's obviously you know there's gonna be like the 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 warning you know hey this is rated x x x x x x x r r r r r r r so that you know you know that there's gonna be like some some gruesome shit. This yeah. is some dark web shit. Yeah, tell me that you're a Game of Thrones fans without telling me you're a Game <laughs> of Thrones fan. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay, last thing I have on this one. Um, Nathaniel Hackett is not a great. I, he's he's not starting off hot. He that that so he there was fourth and three late in the fourth quarter, and he threw a deep ball. Why? Yeah, I don't know. They're not they're like, not calling pass interference as much as they used to. So like, yeah, like I, I I get what he was trying to do there, but like, you're fourth and three, man. Like you could do a sweep. Like you can do like. There's a lot of things you can do with this with with that that. 
with that situation. Yep. And you, could, you decide to take your backup quarterback and tell him to chuck it 25, 30 yards down the field. Yeah, you could even put your tight end under center and try to, yeah, you know, yeah. the, call a cadence. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Get him to jump off sides. That's an automatic first down. Yeah. Hackett, just be better. Nathaniel, be better yeah, just, Nathaniel Hackett has some, has some uh, I don't know. Growing as a head coach. Yes. Growing as a head coach. We'll call it that. You have anything else on the Jets Broncos? Uh, that's it. Jets are five and two. It's wild. Jets beat Broncos sixteen and nine. Let's get to the Tex- Texans Raiders. Um, I don't really have much on this game. It was actually like a like an over that I never thought would hit. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, I mean the Raiders are hitting their stride. They they know their formula now. That's- I was about to say, other than like the Josh Jacobs twenty rushes, one hundred forty three yards, three touchdowns. That's seven point two yards per carry. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, like, yeah, it was just, and it was an over I didn't think would hit. Hey, the over's always a win. Yeah. Um. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Houston, Houston was winning the game, twenty to seventeen, going into the fourth quarter. You, just let let that sink in. You gotta admire the fight in the Texans. You know, they're like they they suck. Everybody knows that they suck. Right. They but, even know that they suck, but they still fight. Here's the thing, Damian Pierce. Very promising young running back. Mm-hmm. Davis Mills is not bad. Like he he's he makes some boneheaded plays, but he also makes some like really good throws. Like he's not he's not a terrible quarterback. He's gonna be a fantastic backup quarterback. He's gonna <laughs> be a great fa- pa- uh, that, backup quarterback. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> he's he, he's gonna be that that guy that's gonna be good at the beginning of the year for like four to six games, middle of the year three to four games, end of the year. One or two games. Yeah, he's he's somebody that you know if your quarterback goes down, he gets hurt or is is suspended. That's the guy you want. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. like that one. You he's you're the like Luke, he's the Luke McCown. He's the Luke McCown. Yes, he's yes. The next Luke McCown. Cool. Yes, he's gonna and he's gonna hang around the league for he's a that while. Back, he's that backup generator. Yeah, <laughs> backup generator. Backup generator. They get <laughs> overlooked, man. But when you need them, when you need them, they're there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I, that's basically all I had for this game. It was just Josh Jacobs. Yeah, Josh Jacobs. Um, Devontae Adams had a pretty good game too, but I mean he, that's expected. Hollins had a big man catch in yes. the end zone. That yeah, was that, I, I was gonna just want to state that out. That was that was some moss shit. Moss shit. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. You got moss shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they, they um, Houston. Was, oh, that was a bad pick six. Mm-hmm. Bad pick six in the fourth. So, anyways, anything else? Ah, uh, that's about it. All right, Texans uh, lose to the Raiders 20 to 38. Let's get to this game. The Seahawks versus Chargers. Seahawks versus Chargers. Seahawks versus Chargers. Seattle is leading the NFC West. Oh, by the way, the Saints beat the the Seattle Seahawks, by the way. Just no big deal. Just throwing that out there. Yep. Um Oh, I, I forgot to mention we forgot to mention that 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 the the whole Carolina or the not Carolina, the Arizona loss puts us out of contention, uh, contention of making history. What would be the history? Beating all all five birds in the same oh, season. Oh, no. Yeah. We had the opportunity to beat we all had, five uh, birds? We had the opportunity to beat all five birds, and we were on the oh, we were on pack, or on track. We had Falcons. We had uh, Seahawks, Se- uh, Seattle Seahawks. We just needed, needed Arizona. Oh, damn. Damn, who yeah. uh, we we got to look up which teams have have won the Bird Bowl. Nobody has. Nobody's done. Oh, nobody's that's what done I'm saying. It? We we Damn. we were on the brink of history. Damn, the Bird Bowl. The I Bird like Bowl. It. Yeah. I like it. That's a. That's we'll need to we need to look that up every single year if somebody has an opportunity to play to, all. To, of them. Yes, and then just we, yeah, uh, that and should then be keep a, a tracker. That, that would be a good bet prop. Yep, that, that would be a great bet prop. Oh yeah, dude, the odds on that. Yeah, actually the. Well, the Falcons or the the or I'm sorry, not the Falcons. The Panthers or the Bucks might have an opportunity too, right? Or well, do they not play the same games, same games as us? I don't know. Maybe I would have we'll to have look to, it up. We'll, we'll have to look that up. But anyways, um, Kenneth Walker is here and he's here to stay. Oh, absolutely. And he is very fast. He's fast. He's very fast. Yeah, that's like a a Madden like ninety eight. 97, 98, Cause, which is good for a running back. You don't oh, see yeah. that in a running back. No, no, no. That, that's only like your Chris Johnsons, you know? Yes, the Chris Johnsons, the, the Devin Hesters of the world. Um, do you think 
Do you think that Pete Carroll just has a good system for, for mediocre quarterbacks? I think he just has a good system in general. I mean, I, I agree with that, but like, like I think I think he took a, a third round pick in Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. made him into a good quarterback. Yeah, because of his system, and that's why probably why he didn't mind letting, letting him go because of Russell Wilson's like, oh yeah, I'm an awesome quarterback, and Pete Carroll's like, no, yeah, he's not. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russell Wilson's like, respect me, the respect me, and Pete Carroll's like, yeah, dude, I like I, I respect you. Up until the point where you demanded all of everything. Yeah. You take your dangerous sandwich uh, elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so bad. Um, but, yeah. I, I think that, like, I think it's it, 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 it gets to a point where, like, like all right. I, I've had some disdain for Pete Carroll since the early 2000s when he was at USC. So, like, I've never been the biggest fan of Pete Carroll. But at this point, I kind of have to respect like his coaching style, his system, like the way the guys play for him, mm-hmm. you have to respect it at this point. I don't, I don't like the guy. I still don't like the guy. His his gum chewing motherfucking ass can can go fuck himself for all I care. Yeah, but I gotta, I kind of respect him. Yeah, kind of respect him. He's a he's a good defense and offensive minded guy. Yes. Like you, you don't you don't really see him favoring one or the other. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think he is a defense previously a defensive backgrounded guy. But um, I don't know. I could it, be him wrong. And, him and well, he did have Reggie Bush and Matt Liner. So like you you can't how how can you not be an offensive team at USC with those two guys? Well, I'm just saying like. His background, like you know how, like you know, Sean like, Payton grew. He was an offensive coordinator, right. and then became a head coach. But he's an offensive minded guy. Right. Um. You got your shoot, uh, Kyle Shanahan, same way. I'm trying to think of other ones that are, um, well, Todd Todd Bowles, Todd Todd is Bowles. Def- came from a defensive yeah, background. Yeah. Rex Ryan came from a defensive background. D'Amico Ryan's D'Amico. Well, he's a defense coordinator. Right. But um, if he becomes a head if coach, he becomes a head coach. Yeah, yeah he'd that, be a yeah. De- yeah. So same thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I, but you don't know like you don't know with him. He like knows both sides of the ball. Correct. Kind of like Belichick. Belichick actually is very fluent in offense. Yeah. Well, he's just Bill Belichick just and he injects football into his veins every morning. Like they, like you know, a heroin addict. They they wake up. They you know they light up their their spoonful of sugar or whatever the fuck they light up. I don't know. I don't know how. I'm not a drug guy. I don't know how heroin works. <laughs> you don't do heroin. I don't do. Heroin. <laughs> Clearly, I don't do heroin. I just know you light something in a spoon. And then you inject it or something. Anyways, so Bill Belichick he injects football into his in, into his veins, and that's and that's just basically what he eats, sleeps, and breathes. So like yeah, you know, and I, I like those guys. They're football guys. They're football guys. Football guys. Um, dude, those Chargers uniforms were fire. I miss those. Those were back in the Antonio Gates days. Yep. You remember that when like Philip Rivers just got in the league oh three to like oh eight? Yeah, they brought back the uh the color coordination. Yeah, dude, those were fucking awesome. I fucking love the Navy. The Navy the the Navy uniforms are just they're they're awesome. Yeah. Um here's the thing. The Seattle fans, I know it wasn't that far of a travel, but they it kind of sound sometimes it sounded like the Seattle fans were louder. Like I understand there wasn't very much there, there wasn't there was more to cheer for with if you're a Seattle fan, but like those Seattle fans were loud. Yeah, they were loud. Um, you gotta think. You, you gotta think, especially with it being an LA game. You know, people are want that's a that's a vacation for them now. Like that's a trip. Yeah. You know, it's right. like oh hey, let's go check out the new stadium, but also my team Seattle's playing. Right. So yeah, exactly. I think it's a destination a destination game for people. Also, like I know like. There's been people who have said this. I can't remember who, but like L.A. in L.A., there's so much more to do than watch football Mm -hmm. that like that's why they that's I I think that was an excuse for why they don't have a lot of active fans like fans that show up to the games and stuff. I mean, they're new to the city, but like like I think it's just there's it's sunny and 75 degrees and like everybody's just like skateboarding or rollerblading or whatever the fuck they do in, in California, surfing, Mm -hmm. smoking weed, you know, doing shrooms, hanging out in the desert, whatever they do in California, that's what they're doing. Like it's not football. Like in down South, it's so hot. You just stay in and and watch football up North. It's so cold. You put, you stay in and watch football like, Mm -hmm. or hockey, hockey up North too. But yeah, like down South, 
It's yeah, it's it, you play football. That's mm-hmm. all you do. You play football. Sometimes you play baseball, and we kind of like basketball. Yep. And we what's hockey? I we, we don't know what's what, hockey. We we don't know what hockey is. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to the 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 game. Um, last thing I have is is Keenan Allen all the way healthy? Because I think they just kind of threw him in. Uh, I don't think he was all the way healthy, but they did throw him in because also Mike Williams got hurt. This is right. a lot of a lot of players got hurt. Yeah. Met, Metcalf, J.C. Jackson, and Mike Williams, yeah, big, so, big stars. Yeah, the Chargers got some shit to figure out. But yep. Anyways, you got anything else on this one? Uh, that's about it. All right, Seahawks beat the Chargers 37-23. All right, this game, Chiefs versus 49ers. This is the first game McCaffrey was there, and so basically. From what I've been gathering, Jimmy G was essentially telling McCaffrey which way to run. Like he, he, had, McCaffrey obviously did. He, he, you know, he was. He, as soon as he got there, he was studying the playbook. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But there were like some plays I've heard that like Jimmy G was just like, "Hey, listen, this is the call. This is the call. You're gonna get the ball. You got to run this way. This is what that is." Oh yeah. And like he's in, and Christian McCaffrey's athletic enough to where he can do that. Yeah, no, he is. But then, no, that was the surprising part when they did say he was going to play because he showed up Friday. Yeah, he showed up Friday, <laughs> and then he played Sunday, and he played Sunday. Yeah, but you don't see that like at all. I I I thought he wasn't going to be able to qualify because typically there's sometimes there's a. Uh, I don't know. I think there's some qualification meters or something like that. I guess some things that he has to go through. Right. And right. going into the new team, which yeah. I thought he wasn't going to be able to play, but they made they they did some stuff. They, they, I don't know if made, it was under the table stuff, but they did some stuff to get made, him on the they field. They made it happen. Yeah. Um. And here's the thing. Honestly, it was all 49ers in the first half, and like with that tough end at the second at the end of the second quarter, mm-hmm. like it was all 49ers. Yeah. It was it, and. I don't know. It, it, it was, dude. It was a five point game in the fourth quarter with twelve minutes, and twelve and a half minutes left to go in the fourth. I was about to say this game was a lot closer than what it actually. Yeah, 44, actually ended 44 up. to twenty three. It does not tell the tale of the of the game. No, like the the forty nine ers just fell apart in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they gave up. They gave up that drive to make it into thirty five, and then they uh, they gave up. They gave up a safety, which then also gave Kansas City another drive down the right, score. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's it. It doesn't. It doesn't tell the tale of the, of the the game. It was actually a really good game. One question I have for you is: McCole Hardman, the new or the Chiefs version of Debo Samuel? Because um, he had he 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 took good rushing the ball. He did. He did. But the the, the thing about McCole Hardman is that he he doesn't show up all the time, but he will show up. He likes to show up and tell you, remind you that he's there and he's fast. Yep, yep. And he's very fast. Oh, he's so fast. <laughs> so, like, Dude, the Chiefs got some speedsters. Like, they gave up Tyreek Hill, but they like Pacheco, mm-hmm. very fast. Very Did fast. Did you see that? That was a kickoff or the kick return at the beginning of the second half. Yes. He oh, sprinted. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, just a straight sprint. He has Andy Reid has that same philosophy that like every single Madden user has whenever they're putting together their team. It's like yes. they always look, they always do the uh, the drop down filter to you know fastest to slowest and just pick up all the ninety nine speed guys. Yep, yep. Just like how you play Madden. That's yep. exactly how you play Madden. Well, most people do it <laughs> like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> um, okay, so one thing about that um, about that kick return at the beginning of the second. Uh, Pacheco, yep. He went out of bounds, but it looked like he after he went out of bounds, he sprinted once he got out of bounds. So he was already out of bounds, and then it looked like he sprinted, and somebody hit him, thinking he was still in bounds. Thinking he was still in bounds. That's a good idea. If you're if you're like running out of bounds and you're close, and you you got a bunch of people, and you're already out of bounds, sprint. Somebody might hit you, and you get a, a flag. And you get a flag. I mean, I'm not an, I'm not advocating for this. I'm just simply observing. I mean, that's it, it, let's but, put it this way: we have we've seen that the offensive players do this in the past, mm-hmm. where they try to draw the flag. Yeah, they try and they basically NBA the NFL. Mm-hmm. That's that's essentially what they're doing. Yeah. But yeah, he just ran. He was out of bounds, and he looked like he sprinted, and so the guy hit him, and he got a flag. Yeah. So. Um, again, like we like we alluded to earlier, Kittle finally was doing Kittle things. Yep. You know, um, I National Tight End Day, over underwhelming, but whatever. 
I think I think they'll use McCaffrey a little bit more. It's a toy. It's a new toy for Shanahan. It'll be he'll use him. I think he'll utilize him the same way they utilize him in Carolina, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you don't think, trade don't, you don't trade a second round, a third round, a fourth round, and a fifth round, um, and not play him. I mean, you're gonna you'll piss off their general manager John Lynch. And yes. you don't want to pitch, piss him off because he can lay a blow on you. Yes. Oh, yeah, as we've seen. He's, he was very good safety. Yeah. Very good safety for the Broncos. Won Super Bowls. Yep, yep. Um, what else you got? Uh, I think the big the big thing about this game was the broken tackles. Yeah. Um, that, and then also that, that, that McKinnon third and 20 screen, pa- screen pass that actually got converted. That's You can't do that if you're at San Fran, especially the way their defense has been playing. I know it's Kansas City, but like it's third and 20. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's third and 20 and he throws a screen. Yeah. And yeah. He, he converts it. All right. So like um, like we were saying about the Bengals are rolling – I think I think the Chiefs are rolling. Yeah, you don't you don't know who to guard now. No, you don't. And and you when you have like a Joe Burrow or a Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, it makes it even more confusing. Yes. So, anyways, you got anything else on this one? Uh that's about it. Chiefs beat 49ers, 44 to 23. Um, all right. So we got two more games and then college. Let's get to the Steelers versus Dolphins. Let's. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one. I don't think you want to either. Yeah. Um. My biggest takeaway was, welcome back, Tua. And then, oh, wait. he's You're still running into tackles with your head down. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? What are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, like that, that, that was my thing. Like, I've, I've always been, like, I, I, I've always said that the, the, the Tua concussion was, was a little, it looked worse than it actually was. Yeah. And I think, like, I, I think my point has been proven over and over with, he, him getting released from the hospital two days later. Him back in the pa- practice squad. I honestly think he could have played way sooner, but the fact that it was so bad that the Miami just were they, they they were cautious about bringing him back. Well, they got so much heat and so much oh, slack sure. from the media and like everybody. Yeah, for sure, he could have been back way earlier. And then this was today was proof. He was literally lowering his head into Steelers defenders. Like mm-hmm. you, if, if you get a really really bad fucking brain injury or a concussion like like he did like supposedly he did mm-hmm. you don't lower your head and just dive into fucking people yeah like, that just doesn't happen i i would have to imagine like the two a defenders or they like the i guess and the, especially the two anon the two anons <laughs> um on twitter and everything you know that we're trying to like t- protest about like hey oh she should not be in the game and stuff like that at this point they're probably like okay you're doing this to yourself. Yeah, I can't. I can't defend you anymore. You can't, you can't defend that anymore. No. Right? Exactly. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know what else to say. Like, I, like the people. I think people just freak out for the sake of freaking out. Mm-hmm. And it's. Uh, and I guarantee you, on Twitter, it's a lot of people that that barely even watch the NFL. They just. They. They just like talking shit. Yep. Um. Let's see. We had a dude. Okay, so the big one of my biggest takeaways besides the Tua thing. Both these defenses are just hard nosed, smash mouth fucking defenses. Oh yeah, they just they love to just lower their helmets and nail you. Yeah, well, and I'm talking Miami and the Steelers. I was about to say that's a Mike Tomlin thing. That's a definitely a Mike Tomlin signature. But, For um, sure, I mean it's a Steelers signature. Yeah, but like Miami was laying blows too. I mean, they got some good defenders. I mean, and Brian Flores installed a very good defensive system over there. Right. He was it, it, their defenses were stout, and then McDaniel's has picked it right, right, right off where it left right, off. Right. Um. So yeah, that, that, I love good old Smash Mouth football, old school. Love it. Um. You know what else I love? George Pickens' nasty catches. Oh yeah. He's he, he's coming. He's, he's like coming. Due, he's like due for one a nasty catch every single fucking every single game. Yeah, like just some like toe touching, like insane one arm or back shoulder, just whatever. It doesn't matter. He's due for one every single week. Yeah, that touch that touchdown pass was. Whew. Oh, I'm just un- I'm just waiting. Unreal. I'm just waiting until Pickens just fully releases and be like, and actually gets in his mind like, oh, hey, I'm throwing to this guy most of the time. Oh yeah, well you talking about Pickett? Pickett, yeah. Yeah. Well it's this is like we'll talk about this in the next game with the the Patriots. You can't have a quarterback that's constantly looking over his shoulder. No. And I think Pickett 
is a little bit like he's. <laughs> I, I my note was Pickett living up to his name. He he threw some he he threw some picks. He threw some picks. He threw some picks. Um, that last one was especially bad, but that was a good catch on the the cornerbacks part. Yeah, it uh, was. I don't know what his name was, but yeah. Um, so all in all, I mean, oh, dude, the Pitt fans travel so well. I mm-hmm. mean, Miami's obviously a great destination, but there were so many uh, terrible towels out there. Yeah, nope. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh loves their Steelers. Pittsburgh loves their Steelers. We know this. We we lived in Pittsburgh. Yeah. for a little bit. So yeah. Um. Yeah, other than it was a boring ass second half, that's all I got. Hey, the Steelers covered. Steelers covered. Steelers covered. I made a lot of money on that one. You got anything else? Ah, uh, that's about it. All right, Steelers lose the Dolphins ten to sixteen. Last game, Bears Patriots. Um, the Pats have a QB problem. That's basically the main thing I took out of this. Bill Belichick has has he he's got to get rid of one of them. Yeah, no. Um, he's got to he's got to axe one of them. I, I, and I'm. Kind of surprised that he went with Mob Rule on that one because they were chanting Zappy and he put Zappy in. Yeah. The fans were chat- chanting uh, Zappy and um, I don't know. A lot of times, too, like coaches will be like, oh, hey, look, this is our starter. We're staying with well, them. Well, they have a game plan. Yeah. And and like just because the, the crowd chants something doesn't mean it aligns with the game plan. And when it doesn't align with the game plan, the coach will usually go with the game plan. Yeah. But they, um, no, he. They put him in. They put Billy Zapp- Bailey Zappi in. I mean, uh, like, listen, hey, Bailey Zappi is a young quarterback. He's good, and like Mac Jones showed prom- Mac Jones showed, showed promise. But I think Bailey Zappi's the guy. But how do you? But how, how do you do this? Like, what? What? Do, what do you, how do you go about doing this? Because they legit have a have a quarterback problem in in um in New England, and it's not a bad one. It's not a bad one. It's just bad in the sense that they have to fucking axe one of them. They have to get rid of. They have to get rid of Mac Jones. Yeah, yep. I they got to get rid of Mac Jones because if as long as Mac Jones is there on the bench, Bailey Zappi's going to be looking over his shoulder and he's not going to be able to play well. Yeah, and we you know. It, well, I'm sorry. I was about to say we know Bel- uh, Belichick hates first round quarterbacks. He hates first round quarterbacks. We know he loves late round quarterbacks. He loves re- late round quarterbacks. Yeah, and like especially for a young QB, a rookie QB, or rookie, or uh, I'm sorry, rookie QB, you can't have a rookie QB looking over his shoulder. Yeah. If if he's not looking forward, then he's going to regress. Mm-hmm. That's it. So. Uh, that's basically the main thing I took away from this. Um, the Bears fucking clobbered the Patriots. Are uh, are the Bears are the Bears teasing us? They might be teasing us. They're they're, the te- they're just teasing the NFL. They're teasing the NFL. Like I, I don't Virginia think McCaskey is just the giant tease. Yes, she is the eighty year old tease. Yes, and so like I mean, because the thing is, is like they're three and four, and they're the same record as the Packers mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. were shitting on them like. You know, three weeks ago. Two, I think we were shitting on him two weeks ago. Yeah. Like, maybe last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, dude. Here's the thing. Fields is very, very athletic. Yes. He's, like, you, like, we were talking about it, and you brought this up uh, the other day. He could kind of fill in a Taysom Hill role. Yes. A little hot, like, that hybrid uh, that, Swiss that, Army that knife hybrid, role. hybrid, I don't know how well he can catch, but, I mean, how hard is it to catch a fucking ball? I mean, if you put enough reps into it, you yeah, can, you will be able to catch he'll, it. He'll find hands. I mean, I like, mean, he here's catch- the thing: he can throw the ball. He has nice touch, mm-hmm. so he can definitely he definitely has soft hands. He can catch the ball. Well, I mean, he catches it every time there's a shotgun. That's true. So that's true. He that, got he got hands. He has to develop some sort of hands. He got hands. I mean, yeah. I so yeah, Fields very athletic. Yes. Oh he, yeah. Should have, should have been roughing the passer call when he got sandwiched, but. That's just that, that's the NFL being super fucking inconsistent. When you turn into a running back, like or as as fast as a running back, they think you're a running back. Exactly. It, it's 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 the it's deceiving for the refs. Mm-hmm. But you got anything else on this one? Uh, not not much. It it was just kind of yeah. It was whatever. Yeah. It, uh, there was other storylines beyond the game, like the, especially like the uh, the switching the quarterbacks and such the, like the, that. The QB problem in in New England. Yeah. No, Which I'm excited to see how this plan pans out because Bill Belichick, he's usually a mastermind at this at these things, but I really do think he's got to get rid of Mac Jones. If he wants Bailey Zappi as the quarterback, he he's got to get rid of Mac Jones. Trade deadline's coming up soon too. That's true. Yeah. Anyways, Bears beat Patriots. Bears clobber Patriots, thirty-three to fourteen. College football. Yeah, let's move on to some college football okay. real quick. We'll. We, uh, I want to start with uh, with. Uh, a, a, a good old fashioned 
Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go fucking Tigers, baby. Dude, all right, that's just, like, this is further proof of the, the, the college football rankings don't mean a goddamn thing. <laughs> no, they don't mean anything. LSU was unranked. Ole Miss was undefeated, number seven, and were plus two. LSU was favored by two points. Yeah, in this game. Tell me the rankings don't mean anything without telling me the rankings don't fucking mean anything. Yeah, Vegas just knows. Vegas knows. They they're like, yeah, you don't, you can't. AP, you can't tell me that this team is this high. Exactly. They're like they're like Zaron. They're the all seeing eye. Yes. Like Zaron and Lord of the Rings, he's the all seeing eye. Vegas is the all seeing eye over fucking just sports in general. Yes. Sports in general. If you if you're if you're betting sports, Vegas is the all seeing eye. Yeah. These these media members, you know, these writers that are sitting behind a desk all the time, it's like they, they make their predictions and stuff like that. They make the crafty little words. They make it sound all cool. Like, oh, yeah, this, you know, this, you know, and, you you know, they'll, they'll convince a lot of people. They'll be like, oh, they that, I think this is the way it's going to happen. And Matt, Vegas is like, no, I've got money on this. The money talks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they do. Like, Matthew Berry makes some convincing arguments about fantasy, but they're always wrong. Yeah, Mel Kiper and, and Todd McShay, they make some great, great, I don't know, draft. They, they do some great draft analysis. Mm-hmm. They're always wrong. Always wrong. Always wrong. Guess who's right? Vegas. Vegas. Every fucking time. Anyways, so Jaden Daniels, here's the thing. He, my, my analysis of him, he's very athletic. And, he's, he, and you can be that athletic and do well in the college game. That's been proven multiple times. Mm-hmm. He, he, it looked like he was looking through his, he was progressing through his reads for the most part. Like he, like it, he didn't get through his second read most of the time. Like he, it was his first read, second read, and then that was it. But I did see there was a couple of plays where he went to his third and fourth read. Like, yeah. And that, that's what all I'm looking for is progr- progress. Yep. All I'm looking for is progress. And yeah, I, I, I I liked what I saw. You got to put hats off to the coaching staff because, the, I mean, that's where it really came in, especially for something like that because I had kind of already written off Jaden Daniels. I had written him off because, you know, going through your progressions is one of the tougher things to do as a quarterback. But it's and one of the most essential things. It's one of the most essential things. But the thing is, you, you don't see a lot of – quarterbacks actually just improve that you know like they'll they'll improve their short passes they'll improve their deep balls you know that's just repetition and stuff like that but you got to have like a you got to grow your knowledge of the game and you got to make sure you get like a confidence about you to go through right right right. the confidence part there's an innate sense about you that that just makes you a a great quarterback yes so like i got to give props to the coaching staff for still believing in him and like now that he goes through his progression He's a dangerous quarterback. He, he's dangerous. Yeah, I mean, dangerous. I mean, he the last three games he's accounted for over a thousand yards. Um, Two hundred of fifty of them have been rushing, he's, and, he, and he's accounted for twelve touchdowns. He's st- twelve touchdowns. Yes, he's still he's still top five on um as far as quarterbacks in the SEC passing yards. Yeah, like he he's you're right. And honestly, we play Florida State again. I guarantee you, we maul them. Oh yeah, maul them. I mean, we were a, a we were a field goal away, yeah, uh, extra point away. Yeah, exactly. And they had a game. They 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 played a game before that game. Mm-hmm. LSU's back, baby. LSU's back. We got to buy, and then we got Alabama. We gonna beat Alabama. We gonna, gonna beat Alabama. Gonna you heard it Alabama. here first. We're gonna beat Alabama. Like, see, this is this is what this is what I do as a fan. I get fucking. I, 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 get, I, I somehow convince myself that we're just the fucking best team in the nation, even though we just got clobbered by Tennessee two weeks ago. Yeah, well, I mean, you're you're exhibiting it head to toe, uh, toe like with the word you're wearing right now. You got the hat, the shirt, and the shorts. Actually, yeah, I'm decked out in LSU. Yeah, Holy you just shit. went, you went all all out. I, I, I put my LSU shirt on yeah. as well. Too, well, fucking so. go Tigers, baby! Well, I mean, Here, go Tigers! Get, yeah, fist me, bro. So. Fist, fist me, bro. Nice, good fisting, yeah, right there. That was a good fisting, dude. Yeah, like, but we looked so good, man. And like, I get so fucking fired up when we beat Ole Miss. I fucking hate Ole Miss. I've hated Ole Miss since Eli Manning, motherfucking, was there. Like, I just, oh. Well, it just feels hot. It feels good to beat Lane Kiffin. It is. It, it does feel. It good. It feels really he, good. He, you know what? He low key has one of those faces you want to punch. Yes, a bow, very punchable face. He's got a very punchable face. Yeah, Lane Kiffin, punchable face. Yeah, not saying I want to punch it, 
But he has a punchable face. Oh, for sure. I definitely want to punch it. <laughs> I know you want to punch it. <laughs> I was just like, well, if, whether if he wants to actually disclose that information or yeah. not, like I was just going to leave that up to you. But yeah, I knew that all along. Yeah, big W for LSU. Honestly, I, I know we're we're obviously very very biased, but LSU controls their own destiny. Like we like if we went out, we go to the SEC championship, and who the fuck knows what's going to happen after that because we have the playoffs. Oh yeah, no, that's. I mean, like you said, they got the. Uh, we're rolling. You got it rolling. I mean, and that's the thing. We're either gonna beat. We're either gonna have to rebeat a Tennessee team if we go to this SEC championship, oh, I want or Tennessee again. or maybe an undefeated Georgia, Georgia team, team, which would look good on a resume. I don't Bro, know. If, I we mean, do you own. Put it, we own Georgia in the SEC championship. I mean, that's true. We <laughs> own Georgia in the. If we meet, if we meet Georgia in the SEC championship, we win. I like our chances. Yes, I do too. All right, let's get let's get to the other college games. Yeah, so that was a big win, big dub, um, big dub. Alabama did its typical thing whenever it, it follows a loss, um, it dominates the other opponent. Uh, Mississippi Mi- State, Mississippi State. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, let's put it this way: Nick Saban had a meltdown on the sideline in the fourth quarter. Oh, right? Nick Saban meltdowns are one of my favorite things to watch. Up up twenty four, a um, couple minutes left in the game, and had an absolute meltdown about a uh, a pass a. I think it was pass interference call or something like that. He never stops. You got to give him a prop, though. I, 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 I do. Well, the, 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 this, the, the, that's the reason he's the best college football coach of all time. Yeah. He, he by, the, I think he beats Bear Bryant. Like, yeah. And so, like, he just never stops. No. He's a 70 year old man that has the, the, the fucking energy of a, a 23 year old dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm still scared of him. I wouldn't fight him. No, that's, that's, that, that's not a face you want to punch. No, <laughs> because he will destroy you. He will destroy you. He, he'll probably eat you. He'll, def- he'll Jeffrey Dahmer your ass. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and yeah, and he, he'll think nothing of it. And nobody's going to say anything because. No. Yeah. Exactly. It'll be like American Psycho up in this bitch. Like, he'll eat you, and then everyone will clean it up, and, like, it'll be like nothing happened. Nothing ever happened, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, poor Mississippi State. <laughs> you just happen to be on the bad end of that. Um, yeah. What's the next one? Uh, we had a top 25 matchup with, with TCU over Kansas State. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, TCU is kind of good. Uh, Sonny Dykes has got the pl- yeah. program going well. They got to play in, play in some fucking football, baby. Yeah. He, I love it. He's got that high flying offense, but thirty eight to twenty eight. Um, the big game uh, this week we had Oklahoma State and Texas. Uh, Texas was leading that game thirty four to twenty four. For I think they were leading the game for most of the game, right? Uh, they were leading the game for most of the game, and uh, but shoot, look at oh, Mike Gundy, baby, Mike Gundy, Mike with Gundy the, in the mullet, pulled out the guns on pulled that out one. The guns, <laughs> so. Wiley Coyote, or uh, what's his name? God, I can't fucking think of the Bugs Bunny character. Wiley Coyote? No. Um, oh, I know who you're talking about. Gosh dang with it. With the I red can't... mustache. Yeah. Uh, anyways. We'll, oh. we'll figure it out. Wah, wah, wah. Um, if you want to take a look at that while, uh, while I... Uh, yeah. Um, but be, basically, uh, the tie... The Yosemite. Tie the game. Yosemite. Yeah, Yosemite. that's Yosemite. Yeah. yeah. Or Yosemite. Yosemite. Hang on. Yosemite, Yosemite. One yeah. of the two. Um, anyways, what were you going to say? Um, but no, to, to tie the game up, Sanderson, the quarterback for Oklahoma State, had a no-look Matthew Stafford-esque pass. He, uh, and he drew off the safety, too, because the safety basically had both of them covered. They were both, like, deep deep routes into the end oh, zone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had a nice no-look pass. He looked off, looked him off to the right and threw it to the guy to that's the left. So, that's so sexy. It is. That's so sexy. That is a sexy that's throw. Like, that, that'll give you a boner right there, too. Yeah. Just all about football giving guys boners. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Update on the – it was Yosemite. Okay. It's Yosemite, Sam. Gotcha. But anyways, uh, yeah, football giving guys boners. Like it's just a thing. Like you, yeah, like whenever I'm having sex and I'm trying not to come too soon. Okay. I don't think about football. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it, if I do, I'm just. I'm You're done. done. I'm done. Yeah, you, you get you'll be doing vinegar strokes and being like Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> Drew Brees, <laughs> Drew Brees, LSU, <laughs> the Saints, Go Tigers, Go Tigers, <laughs> Go Tigers. <laughs> Do you think Coach O, he does that? He says that whenever I don't he's... want to picture Coach O having sex, but yeah, he does that. <laughs> he definitely does that. He definitely does that. <laughs> At climax. Sex. Yeah, yeah. And, it, like, it's just, like, uh, never mind. I don't want to picture it. Okay, I, like, let's, uh, let's move on. Yeah, all right, let's move on. All Anyways. right, um, one I have to pick, uh, this one I have to point out, Liberty 41, BYU 14. Um, Liberty 7-1. and one. 
this isn't the first time Liberty's actually been pretty good. Um, Hugh Freeze has to be. He's got to be at that point where he's defrosting as far as everybody's uh, not wanting him as a head coach anymore. <laughs> I, I can just I was like again, yeah, it this plays to to the ADHD our attention span. Like yes, Hugh Freeze is defrosting. Yeah, you you got to imagine there's going to be some athletic directors at some programs that are going to go up to their uh, the school presidents and be like, <laughs> okay, hear me out. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and give their case for Hugh Freeze. For Hugh Freeze, yeah. <laughs> just listen to this real quick. Just, just let, let, let me let me talk to you for a second, okay? Um, so we know what had happened. We know but, what, yeah. but but Liberty <laughs> is seven and one. Yeah, they're they've been pretty good for a couple of years, and you know, Nebraska hasn't had a good team in a while. <laughs> We could really use a splash. Could, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, no, I still want Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer to Nebraska. I'm still going for it. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, actually, actually, I like Hugh Freeze to Nebraska too. Yeah, but I'm uh, talking about coaching changes. Um, South Carolina beats Texas A&M 24 to 30. How hot is Jimbo's seat right now? Let's put it this way. It, he just got an extension this off season because the you know the rumors of him going to LSU yada yada yada. It's like the Mel Tucker thing. Yep. It's like the Mel Tucker thing. It's like why did we pay you this much money? Yeah. But he's got, and he's got an insane buyout. Yes. So too. Was it ninety five million dollars? Yes. But if there's any program in the nation that could buy him out, it is Texas A and M. Texas A and M. Yes. Yeah. The they, richest they, boosters of all of college football. How crazy is that? They are the richest boosters. Of, like, I figured it would be Texas or Alabama or Oklahoma or USC. Like a big school. Like something, something like, like that. Something like that. Texas A&M. Yeah. I mean, who would who would, who would Texas A&M go for? Hugh Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Freeze. Maybe Hugh Freeze. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. <laughs> right. So, um, actually... If I remember correctly, I think, I think the athletic director who's at Texas A and M hired on Q Freeze at Ole Miss, but I could be wrong. We'd have to fact check. Oh no, that. no, no! I, I'm going to convince my brain that you're right. On that, that I'm right on that. Yeah, yeah. it's too good of a story. I, yeah, line. it's way too good of a story. <laughs> I, I really want that to happen so bad. Yes, so bad. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, Jimbo Fisher's seat's got to be. He's got to be hot. Bro, it's got to be hot. That motherfucking ass is burning worse than fucking. Shitting out Taco Bell, this this oh, and God. the the crazy thing is, is his best record at this point could be is eight and eight and four. That's his best record. Who he's got left on the schedule? He still has Ole Miss. He still has Florida. He still has Auburn, and he still and has LSU. LSU. Yeah. So, so yeah, hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Seven and four is his best record. No, eight and four. Eight and four is, eight and four is eight his, best. his best possible record he could have. If he, if he runs the table. I think LSU dodged a bullet there. Uh, you know what? Like, At hey, this point. He, he he was our offensive coordinator when we when we won a national championship in 03. And for that, I thank you. But no thank you. But no thank you. Anymore. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm sticking with Brian Kelly. Brian I'm, Kelly. Oh, I love Brian Kelly. I've done, like, all right. So I've done, like, a 360 on Brian Kelly or a 180 on Brian Kelly Probably three or four times this year. So you definitely have done a 360. So you know, I've done two 360s. <laughs> yeah. So like I did a 180, and then I did another 180, and then I did another 180, and then I did another 180. Yes. So yeah, you're back on. You're back so on board. I'm, I'm I'm at a 720 right now. Yeah. But 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 here, here's the thing. I'm. This is an announcement. I am all the way on the Brian Kelly train. I'm all all the way for BK Knights. BK Knights, love it. When did, where did that come from? Uh, just now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, BK Knights. Love it. BK. Burger King. Yeah, nice. exactly. Nice. I love it. All right. Anyways, what you got left? Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, we'll wrap it up wrap a little bit here. Um, UCLA uh, in Oregon. Chip Kelly got to return to uh, Eugene as a top 10 matchup, uh, but fell short 30 to 45 I mean, to Oregon. Or- Oregon's got a good team, though. So, like, yeah, they, 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 they made, like, they got embarrassed by Georgia at the beginning of the season. So, like, it, that's kind of like the standard that they've been like. They were like, "Oh, you got destroyed, so you're really not that good." No, no, no. Georgia's, Georgia's, or um, I'm sorry, Oregon's pretty good. They've they've won out so far Georgia's, since then. Georgia's just really good. Yeah, well, Georgia's. I mean, they got Kirby Smart. They got 
athletes. Set, they got set, dogs. Sets and Bennett, pretty much like they, they 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 got dogs that replaced the dogs that went to the NFL. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. and then moving on, we had Clemson versus Syracuse. Dude, that was a close game. I mean, Syracuse was up. And then all of a sudden, Clemson just makes a quarterback change, which was crazy because DJ uh, Ungalele, Ungalele, yep. Ungalele, yeah, basically has been the quarterback for quite some time now. But right, yeah, and uh, yeah, put a change in quarterback and end up winning it. Yeah, coming back and winning it. Oof. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough for Syracuse. Um, and then just keeping track with OSU, still top they're, dog. They're, they're still they're still going to be in the playoffs. They're probably going to. Be in the national championship. Yep, Iowa um, beat up on Iowa, fifty-four to ten. So, yep. Um, but that about wraps up on college football. Okay. Again, we have uh, the golden days of, of sports. So mm-hmm. we got the Houston Astros are playing the Philadelphia Phillies in the World Series. This starts October twenty-eighth. Yep. Um, go fucking Astros because. If the Philadelphia Phillies win, I have to take my friend to Vegas. <laughs> is that is that a bad thing? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, well, I have to pay for it. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, I if the Philadelphia Phillies win, I have to take my friend to Vegas and pay for it. So, dang, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, I also made this bet at at the mid year when the Phillies sucked. Like this was after, uh, this was after. So the Phillies, middle of the year, they beat the Mets, and. After that, they went on like a uh, one in ten stretch. Okay, and that was it. And I was like, "All right, I'm I'm convinced. I'm, I'm good. I got this." So yeah, I need. I'm placing a like. I'm here's the thing. I'm gonna place a large bet on the Philadelphia Phillies, so that if they do win, I can pay for this guy's Vegas trip. But if they lose, I don't have to pay for the guy's Vegas trip. That's big brain. Big brain. Big brain. Big brain right time. There. Big brain. I was pretty proud of myself for that one. Yeah. No, f- that for sure. I, okay. I'm, I'm proud of you for that. Thank you. But Thank you. Actually, you know what's kind of funny? I um, So I was on a business trip to Philadelphia during- Philadelphia. The, uh, and uh, yeah, so- City of brotherly love. City of brotherly love. And on Sunday, I was going out to dinner and you know my Uber gets completely stopped because South Broad Street is completely filled with people. I bet that was <laughs> insane. <laughs> oh, it was nuts. We were just like- all right, well, you know what? We uh, appreciate you taking us this far. We're just going to walk. This, so, this, then, this was what, this past weekend? Yes. Yeah, that was after the Phillies figured out they were going to the World Series. Yeah, yep, yep. They're, they're drinking Riot Punch. Yes. Oh, yeah, dude, it was Riot Punch all over the All place. over the place. <laughs> all over the in, they had, inside had, of people, on the streets, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. All right, well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll recap that next week because, uh, that yeah, that starts October 28th. Also, um, tune into the NBA because the Pelicans are going to win the NBA Finals. I know, right? Done. Yes. So, anything else? Uh, that's about it. Love y'all. Later.